Hi guys. Hi. You okay? Yes, I just have met everyone on the Zoom. You need that. Thank you for joining us today for our pre-match press conference for our battles of itself, which will go to Manchester United this weekend. We will start in the room with Sky Sports, then we'll move to the broadcasters on Zoom if you want to raise your hands, and then we'll move back to the room in the room and then back to Zoom. Um, for the broadcasters, please keep it to two questions apiece for both Cara and Laura and the Britons, one apiece, and then we'll come back round at the end if we have time for any that need mapping up. There's no embargo on this as it is being streamed live onto our channels, but we will upload the footage afterwards as well. So, Alan, do you want to kick us off? Okay, hi Gareth. Hi Alan. Um, hope you're well. Um, Thank you. Over 43,000 tickets sold so far. It's um, a great occasion. I suppose this is something we want to see on a regular basis, but more importantly on the pitch on Sunday, how important is the experience of your big name players, those that have done it in the Euros on the big stage, going to be? Well, yeah, I think it, you know experience is great to have. You know, We've got uh, a lot of young players as well, so they draw on the experience of the elder players but um, and I think that help as well just to try and normalise things as much as there's quite a bit of hype around this game being away from obviously the normal stadium we play in and again I think our job has just been to keep things simple do what we do we've been playing really well recently everyone's really contributing and uh, but also within that we're, we're really looking forward to the game on Sunday Well you couldn't be in better form could you um, confidence plays such a an important part in, in football when you've won nine successive games. Um, this is the perfect scenario going into this type of game, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I think the reasons probably why we've done that is good concentration from the girls. I think focusing on the next game has been the objective and not getting too far ahead. A lot of people were talking about this game, the outside world, and that's normal because it's, it's something a little bit different. And like you say, the support... The support numbers at the moment look great and I think it's going to be a great experience for, for everyone involved. Um, but again, yeah, just for us, it's make sure we concentrate on what we can affect and and try to play the, the game rather than the occasion, if that makes sense. Yeah. Very yeah. boring, I know. <laughs> Cliché, but uh, <laughs> quite right. Uh, Laura, um, it's fair to say that you do have a wealth of experience having been there and done it. You know, you've done the double with Chelsea in the, in the past. Um, what do you make of these sort of occasions where you're playing in front of a, a crowd of 43,000 plus? Yeah, I think it's what we all really look forward to as soon as this game was at the Etihad and against United as well. It's the perfect, um, yeah, perfect game for it. And we've all really been looking forward to it for not just me, but everyone in the squad, the young players who have been there and done it. Everyone's really looking forward to this game. And, and could you tell me a little bit more about the team spirit? Because after those first two defeats of the season where you've had to integrate new players into the squad, how has that come on and benefited you um, coming into these sort of games? I think every week that's gone by we've kind of, um, I don't know, just gelled a little bit more and every week we get a little bit more confidence in the way we play and our strengths as a team and we're going into this in a great place, nine wins on the bounce, so if it's as good a time as ever to play them. Yeah, we just saw you on the training ground there. There does seem to be a great atmosphere amongst all the, all the players. Yes, it's a um, great atmosphere, great vibe, and, yeah, we're in a good place. Thank you. I don't believe there's any further broadcasts on the Zoom, so Louise, do you want to kick back in the room on the Britons? Hi Gareth, you're all Hi. right. <laughs> yeah, good time. Um, I just wanted to check, like with training today, was there anything specific you've targeted ahead of Manchester United? Not necessarily anything we've not come up against previously. I think with the with the girls, we're always emphasising this is what we expect to see in the opposition. These are their potential threats, but we know that that can can change. Some teams are very set in what they do. For instance, Liverpool have played the way they play the whole season so far. Um, we're probably expecting the same from United, certainly in, in the way they look to press and the way they look to, to play with the ball. So we don't expect anything outside of the ordinary for that. But we always say, and we always train for the what-ifs. And I think the girls at the moment, like Laura said, are in a real good place and everyone has good understanding, good knowledge. 
good understanding as well of what we do, but also of each other and the way they work together and the symmetry has been, been really good. Even when we make changes in the team, I think the level of performance has been still to a high level. Um, and Laura, like the crowd, 2000 roughly, um, United bring a very loud crowd, they've, they've always said that. And you, your guys, like last week, were doing a thunderclap, it was very, very what's the atmosphere going to be like for you and how much are you looking forward to that? I think, I think it's going to be brilliant and these are the weeks that you really look forward to as a player and the atmosphere home or away against United is always a feisty one I think it always makes the start of the game really good and um, yeah it's just it's going to be a great day great day for spectators and for us as well Thanks Elise we'll move on to the Zoom guys and Phil Medler Park and Press Association do you want to kick us off? I'd like to call off Gareth um, what's the good thing to you to check um, I was Lauren Hemp after coming on the other day and uh, also Vicky Lasada, where is she at the moment? Yeah, Vicky trained fully today, looked really good. Um, so we'll see. I think outside of that, pretty much everyone is is uh, available. Probably really healthy uh, selection choice for us to have. Uh, real good numbers. I think um, that always helps. And, and I think uh, it gives us some good options for the weekend, for sure. Whether that's from the beginning or certainly... I think you've seen the way the modern game is moving towards with five substitutions available. You know, the impact of substitutions is uh, is crucial to any team. Lauren, are you ready to play from the start if, if that's what you want to do? Lauren's fine, yeah. Lauren's fine, yeah. She's, uh, she's in a good place. I think you saw with her performance when she entered the pitch the other night, was really confident, contributed within a couple of minutes of, uh, of an assist for Mary. So, yeah, she's in a good place. Any questions for Laura? Phil, are you done with that? Okay. He's Dan done. Hand, please. He's done. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, are you there? Hello, mate. You're there. Yeah, sorry, I was getting a bit of an echo again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing you again, Dan. Come on. <laughs> Been since City have last played at the SEA, I think it was what September 2019, was it? Mm. Yeah. It's a long time now, we've had COVID and that sort of thing, but you know, does it kind of feel that we've had a lot more produced as a kid? For me or for you? Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, we were just talking before myself and Emma, it was Emma's first game after two weeks of being at the club, of, of you know, so she must have thought this is a, a normal thing to happen and then for it to be sort of three over three years before it happens again look I think it's a, it's a great occasion I think we're going to go out and do our very best to be as effective as we can be I think we need to enjoy the experience regardless of the way the game goes we're, we're going to try uh, we're in good form good spirits um, two good teams going up against each other and like I said previously we just want to try and finish off the year on a on a good note um, obviously we have another game afterwards just before that uh, before the Christmas break but yeah I think it's great to play at the main stadium I think uh, we really enjoy playing at CFA I think you know we've made that a real dominant ground for us I think our, our win percentage there is really really high this is a different experience for us I think um, we'll still look to use the advantage of it being a, a home fixture if you like so uh, yeah it's it you know whether it's been long overdue before we're back here again is is immaterial really like you say there's a lot that's happened since with covid that brought its own problems and issues so i think we're just uh, pleased to be here pleased to see that there's really good numbers um and hopefully everyone enjoys the game Cheers, and, um, well, i just want to kind of ask you'll tell me you don't look at the table um, but yeah you've obviously got that added incentive to kind of you know, move on to a kind of level footing with Man United on 21 points if you win. You know, as players, do you, look, do you look at that and does that kind of give you any kind of added motivation for this weekend? Yeah, no, no motivation needed really against United, but yeah, it would be great if we could end the year sort of on level, level points with them. And obviously then we're just three points off the top, I think.
<laughs> with um, Arsenal. So, yeah, it would be really nice to end the year there after, you know, a, a tough start for us. Thanks so much for the weekend. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. And move <clears throat> Graham Falk, please. Graham? <laughs> we'll just move on to Sandra Groby then, please. Hi, Gareth. Hi, Laura. I hope you both well. Um, Thank you. Just going to, to the you know, attendance numbers, in particular, more than 43,000 or what have you coming along. I mean, how do you feel this game could serve as a kind of like advertisement to the growing calls for more dedicated away ends for um, fans in, in the WS? I mean, I can imagine it's going to be quite raucous uh, between the City fans with the drums and then obviously United fans are just loud in general anyway. Just, just what are your, your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's good, and I think it's different to what we've had previously. I would say that I've been to I've been to women's games, whether it be on an international level or club level, and I quite like the interaction between the fans. I think I love the nature of the safety of supporters sitting next to one another. I think it's that's quite a nice atmosphere to be in. Um, slightly more different obviously than what we see from from other uh, levels of the game but you know the reasons for it I'm not too sure maybe to create a difference in the atmosphere but um, yeah you know it's it's what we see on on the world stage particularly in the men's game and, and up and down the country just that kind of segregation so I don't know we'll have to see how it goes really to see if it's something that works really well or not but like I said to you I thought it was quite interesting to see fans sitting side by side we've we've exp that's all I've ever experienced really even at Wembley finals you know you see no real segregation for supporters um, had it a little bit in the Conti Conti Cup final down at Wimbledon where it felt like we had one end and Chelsea had quite a lot of the other areas so um, yeah but most of the time we don't really tend to see too much segregation certainly in WSL fixtures and Laura, just for you, I mean, you've been very good for three goals in eight uh, WSL games. I mean, how do you feel that you've evolved since last season? And just in terms of how you're influencing what goes on in that midfield uh, this season? Um, I don't know. I, ju I just try and um, go into every game having sort of an objective. And, you know, it helps when you've got amazing players around you. And I just feel like we're really starting to work really well as a team and in our little triangles on the field um, and for me I'm just taking it all in week by week trying to learn from my performances and being better the next game. Thank you. Thanks Sandra. I believe we've got Graham who's back now. Graham? Hi Graham, sorry if I'm a bit of on this, I'm not sure if I've been able to a technical Yeah. This is a game, obviously one of the few that I've seen this season where there have been loads of fans packed in uh, across the sort of country. I think it wasn't too long ago where Arsenal were discussing there'd be a system where they could play all of the Arsenal women's game at the Emirates. Obviously, things have to change because everyone looks that to happen, but if that was to happen in the future, if that was something that was to be implemented, what would be your feelings on it? I think it would be a good thing. I think, obviously, it would be a ground staff's nightmare, but I think it would be a good thing for... Uh, for clubs to commit to that I think Leicester do it Reading do it as well um, they tend to be able to work it somehow but obviously like we said previously about demands on players I think there's a lot of demand on stadiums now so it's it's pretty full on and we understand the logistic issues that you have with that so for us it's about um, it's about kind of sticking with what we know if that changes anytime soon then you know we'll be it and um, you know regardless of whether we're there every week, every other week at the Etihad, would you expect to see the big crowds that we probably see as more of a one-off? I'm not too sure. But, you know, look, the way the game is going and the way the interest is developing and the success stories more recently, I think it's, um, it's something certainly to look at. Hello, just a quick one for you on a, a very similar subject. Obviously, I've seen in Manchester as a city, big attendance this week, big attendance last week at the traffic. How proud are you to be part of the team of the imagination of the local public? So proud. It's something you just 
grow up dreaming about having going to games and having thousands of people watch you it's 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 great and I'm so proud that um, we're up in the attendance so much from 2019 as well um, so yeah it's, it's going in the right direction and hopefully everyone out there can see it's heading in the right direction as well Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Graham. We'll move to Tom Gary on Zoom, please. Hello, thank you so much for your time. Um, I just uh, wanted to ask a question about the Oz football because um, yesterday, um, Karen Barsley uh, and the Greater Manchester Nair, Andy Vernon, were talking about a letter they'd written to every school in Manchester um, calling on them to give girls equal access to football in PE. Um, and I just guess just wanted to get your your take on that, your um, and report on that. And, um, days for, for the sport and, uh, and also just the work that Count, you know, a city legend is doing um, in, in the community in that aspect. Yeah, I mean, like, short answer for me is it's great. I think it's really necessary and something that we completely back as a club. Um, and then, of course, with Karen, yeah, I think when you have someone of her stature and her, you know, who's had a great career here at the club, who stands for pushing the boundaries for women's football, then there's no greater person really to have to do that. Great, thank you so much for your time and, and best of luck for the weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Any further questions on Zoom, guys? Otherwise, we've got one more in the room from Sky. Okay, Alan, take it away. Just, just on Manchester United, Gareth, have you been surprised by their form this season? They have only conceded five goals in the eight games. I know they've got some talented players, but have they been better than you expected? I wouldn't necessarily say they've been better than what I expected. They're a, they're a club that's emerging. You know, they uh, they've managed to retain some of their best players. I think, which was really important. And uh, yeah, you you normally see it. I mean, they made a fair challenge last season, and it was kind of not until the end where we actually went past them, and we probably had a similar scenario when we played them at the Academy Stadium, where we were. I think maybe a couple of points behind them and we made a big shift obviously that day by winning um, but you know I think there's a lot of football left to come I've, uh, they're putting on good displays like you say I think for the first few games of the season they didn't concede started to concede a few more goals more recently um, have probably a better depth of squad now so they've changed things around a little bit in the Conti Cup as well um, which didn't obviously the outcome didn't work for them because they've exited the competition so look, I think um, they're emerging, and you know they've, like I say, they've got some good young talent there as well. I think we've seen that, and uh, you, you know I'm not surprised that they're they're up at the top end of the of the division. So just finally, then, as a follow up to that, do, do you think the league is more competitive now, and that that's the way it will continue? Yeah, I think it is. I, I think uh, it's such a you have to be so flawless. I think you know every team's lost this season. You know, some teams have lost one game, some lost of two. You've got other clubs that are improving. I think when you only have 22 games in a season, it makes it really competitive and you have to be pretty flawless. And I think over previous years, maybe the last four or five years, correct me if I'm wrong, but some teams have maybe lost one. We lost one game, I think, in my first season. We still didn't win the league. So it just tells you how tight things are and how the levels of competition and, and clubs are improving for sure. So. I think it makes the uh, the league more competitive, and I've always said there are no easy games. There's no games that are won on paper before you play them. You know, a lot of teams now put five five at the back, makes it so difficult. We've seen that in the World Cup for teams teams like Spain struggling to beat Morocco. It's so difficult, um, which makes the comp competition even harder. Good luck for the weekend. Thank, Thank you. you. Perfect. If there's no further questions, we'll leave it there, guys. Um, as I said at the beginning, no embargo on any of this, but I will upload it to the media portal very shortly. Any questions, as always, just drop me a line. Perfect. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you.